Hello, and welcome to episode 30 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Legion painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the Pike Syndicate foot soldiers from Atomic Mass Games' Star Wars Legion. The Pike Syndicate can be seen wearing a wide range of different colour schemes, which allows a fair bit of freedom when choosing how to paint them. I've chosen to give my Pikes quite a colourful complementary colour scheme, and I'd encourage you to have some fun exploring ideas of your own. I'll begin by assembling the miniatures before priming in black, followed with some grey and white zenithal highlights applied from above as usual. I'll then be using a combination of opaque colours, contrast colours, and some shade to achieve a nice quick tabletop standard. There's then a range of finishing touches we can add, including some skin markings and general highlights. In particular, I'll be enjoying some quick and easy semi-non-metallic metal effects for the armour, along with a touch of battle damage and weathering. I'll also be giving some extra attention to the Electro Whip, the Unit Leader, and the Pike Syndicate Capo, who I decided to give a more unique colour scheme to help him stand out. Let's begin. I'm first assembling the miniatures with plastic glue, and there are enough figures here to include the optional extra foot soldier, along with the disruptor and electro whip specialists, and the Pike Syndicate capo. As usual, I like to prime the figures in black, and here I'm providing some grey and white zenithal highlights from above, as detailed at the beginning of the series. To help obscure any unwanted seams or small gaps on the miniatures, I sometimes like to use some brush on varnish by Vallejo, and this can of course be done before priming. I've also chosen to add the basing to the figures now rather than later, so here I'm applying some brown earth basing paste by Vallejo, along with a few cork rocks. Once fully dry, we can provide a dry brush with something like Vallejo's buff or ivory to bring out the texture. And finally I'm going to shade the bases down using my Geonosis mix of Agrax Earthshade and Fugan Orange. We're now ready to begin painting. I'm going to begin by painting the parts of the outfit that I want to be blue using a mix of Caspian Blue and Bearing Blue. If you're after a more muted look, something like Anthracite Grey or Citadel's Dark Reaper would be fine here. Naturally, I'm batch painting the whole unit to save time. For the parts I've chosen to paint orange, I'm using a mix of Mars Orange and Sol Yellow. Once again, for a darker look, you could use a more muted brown tone here if you like. You can see that I'm visually breaking the miniature up by alternating the colours, but you could equally keep the entire leg area, for example, pretty monotone instead if you prefer. I'm now switching to the skin, where I've chosen to use a few different contrast colours to vary the tones. I'm starting with a greenish mix of Creed Camo and Plague Bearer Flesh, thinned with a little medium. I'm taking care to soak excess paint from the very top of the head, which we want to appear more highlighted. And here I'm adding a little extra Creed Camo to the more shadowed areas. I find paints like the contrast colours to be especially effective for organic surfaces like this. For a more bluish look, I'm now trying Griff Charger Grey mixed with Ethermatic Blue. I 
and here I'm just experimenting with a mix of the green and blue schemes already shown. With the skin tones complete, I'm now using a roughly equal mix of Black Templar and Griff Charger Grey to paint all of the weapons. I've also decided to use this for the holsters. Here I've realised that I missed some of the skin on the arms. Next I'm going to thin some Griff Charger Grey with a little medium and use this to shade the face masks as well as all of the armour plating and the legs. I quite like how the paint pools on these shoulder pads and I'll be building on this to create some nice semi non-metallic metal effects in a moment. Finally, I've decided to shade down the orange top using Seraphim Sepia. With that done, we've already achieved a pretty good tabletop standard. Join me now for some optional finishing touches. I'm going to begin by drawing on the skin markings and I'm using Abyssal Blue for the more bluish skins. We're after three slightly wavy lines on each side of the head. For the more greenish skins, I'm mixing in some Arden Green. I'm now adding a few highlights to the blue areas by adding some white sands and a little Caribbean blue to the base tone. And for the orange areas, I'm just mixing in more of the salt yellow. Next I'm just painting the toes with some nacar, and any off-white would be fine here.
Moving on to the armour, I'm going to add some bright semi-metallic highlights using speed metal, which I'm mixing into some vanilla white. Ivory would also be fine here. The key thing is that I like how the slightly warmer tone of the highlights contrasts against the colder hue of the metal. These highlights can be fairly bold and sketchy. Along the way, I'm also adding some additional neat Griff Charger Grey to darken the shadows and maximise the contrast. This is quite a fast and fun way to create a fairly striking look. I'm also adding a few quick highlights to the faces as well as the weapons. With that done, I'm now adding some chipped paint to the chest armour using the same orange tones used previously. Just as I did with the Magna Guard unit leader, you can see that I'm leaving the edges to give the impression of the paint having chipped away. This kind of effect would of course work with whatever colour you like. I'm also highlighting this up with the addition of some white sands. To achieve some additional chipping and battle damage, we can layer some very dark and light tones on top of one another. Next I'm finishing off most of the unit by painting the small protrusions on the face with a pink flesh tone. I'm now going to paint the Electro Whip, firstly by providing a pure white undercoat. Next I'm using some yellow and orange to provide some fiery tones moving more orange towards the tip. And I've decided to lighten the other end with the addition of some white. I'm now just refining the transitions a little. And I'm adding some brown to the orange to further darken the tip before adding my last few refinements.
For the unit leader, I just need to add some colour to the front of the headpiece, and for that I'm using a mix of iron and yellow and Griffhound orange. And here I'm adding a few final highlights to the metal. This completes the main unit of foot soldiers. I decided to use a different scheme for the capo to help him stand out, and I went back and forth a bit on the colours, but here are the main tones I ended up with. I chose to paint some of the outfit purple, using violet mixed with a little navy blue to add a sense of regality. For the outer robe, I used varying proportions of Arabic shadow and Sahara yellow. I ended up adding some pretty heavy dark lining here too. For the highlights, I added Tenera yellow, and to boost the saturation, I also used some Sol yellow. For this headpiece, I'm just using iron and yellow. And for the eyes, I'm first providing an undercoat of pure white, followed with a couple of layers of Vallejo's fluorescent magenta. For the design on the chest, I'm going to highlight up from black through Gobi Brown, Sahara Yellow and Tenera Yellow. I've now decided to brush some thinned Mars Orange into the mid-tones. And these are my final highlights of pure Tenera Yellow. At this point I chose to replace the blue parts of the outfit with a mix of brown leather and black leather. And I'm highlighting this up with the addition of some walnut and Sahara yellow. I'm now just painting the rims of the bases in black before adding my last few highlights. And 
and this completes the Pike Syndicate Foot Soldiers. Thank you for joining me, I hope you've enjoyed the episode and found some of the ideas useful. As usual, you'll find a full product list in the video description, along with all of the places I can be found online. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Legion. Happy painting!